The Power of the Dime by Bishop E. Bernard Jordan. Chapter one, what are you doing with your dime? Look at a dime and examine it carefully. The state of your finances, emotions, and spirit is a result of that small, thin dime. You are blessed or cursed because of a dime. God requires a mere dime for each dollar that he gives to you. If you give it, then he blesses you. But if you withhold it, then he curses you. The dime, though diminutive, is powerful. 70% of the body of Christ are operating under a curse because they choose not to tithe. Those who attempt to rationalize the word of God to fit their own opinionated concepts are sentenced to the spiraling curse of financial failure. Many embrace the belief that tithing is an Old Testament practice that they are excluded from since we are under grace. Jesus appeared and we have been released. That's a lie. The tithing principle was introduced before the law was instituted by God. Abraham paid tithes. If you consider yourself to be the seed of Abraham, then follow his example. Power tip number one. 70% of the body of Christ is operating under a curse because they choose not to tithe. Jesus said that the Pharisees and Sadducees have a tenth of their spices. If they pay tithes and couldn't recognize Jesus in their hypocrisy, then what about you who have become a son of the king? Your righteousness should exceed that of the Sadducees and Pharisees. Is the dime required today? During a church meeting, one person said, Pastor, I don't believe in tithing because the New Testament doesn't address it. The New Testament only mentions giving. He is correct. The New Testament only mentions giving because tithing was previously established in the Jewish community during the writing of the New Testament. You are not a giver until you give beyond the 10% tithe. Like a government which taxes its citizens in order to financially remain afloat, the tithe can actually be seen as your tax for existing on the earth, which is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Tithing is God's financial system for establishing his kingdom in the earth. New Testament tithers did not give meager amounts like $10, $100, or $1,000. The early church leaders asked those saints to sell their land and houses. They willingly brought the proceeds of the sale and laid them at the apostles' feet as an offering. By today's economy, their standard offering ranged from $50,000 to $300,000. Power tip two, you are not a giver until you give beyond the tithe of 10%. The current financial level of commitment found in the average local church pales in comparison to the commitment of the early church. Yet, we as the latter are supposed to be greater than the former. Our giving must be as supernatural towards the work of the Lord as our faith is to see and experience miracles. The apostles of the early church did not request a board meeting to decide how to spend money. Everyone understood the delegation of divine authority that rested upon the shoulders of the apostles. The apostles distributed the funds according to the needs 
as they perceived them to be. As a result, the early church had no lack in their midst. When was the last time that you laid a house at God's feet? If God required your tax refund check, would your pastor have to put a gun to your head in order for you to give it? Will you willingly bring the tithe from your check in minimum obedience to God? Many saints have uttered these words. Lord, if only I could have been in the early days of the apostles, then I would have obeyed your every command wholeheartedly. It's sad to say, but no, you would have dropped dead under the power of the Holy Ghost. For your tendency towards disobedience and fear of giving would have incurred the wrath of God. The dime determines destiny. The world is serious about inventing new ways to remove money from your wallet. Everyone is after your money. When shopping for clothing, you will pay a 300% markup price. Even the president of the United States desires to raise taxes. Credit card companies are overjoyed when you cannot pay your bill on time because they can charge 20% interest. As a nation, we have become entangled by consuming financial debt, which has swallowed the financial vitality of most Christians. It is the man of God who has the best reward system out of everyone who asks for your money. He says, if you place it in my hands, then I'll give you a 100-fold return because I represent the kingdom of God. The windows of heaven will open and you shall receive a blessing for which you don't have room. The devil has blinded Christians because we believe that the church is not the place to discuss finances. We're not supposed to mention money. However, money is one of the key determinants of your future success. Your salary is established during the offering. Man determines your salary, but obedience to God will determine your income. The personal handling of your finances and substance determines whether you enter into the fullness of blessings within your career or not. Let pride fall from you. It's fat free. Make a quality decision to consistently tithe. Here's a hint. If you're still asking, should I tie from my net or gross income? You have not been delivered. There's a song that says, you can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try. However, your miracle is in the try. The song continues, the more you give, the more he gives to you. Recognize the dream locked inside of you is just waiting to happen. The genesis of your dream is within the dime. The dime at first glance may appear to be insignificant, yet it carries the power to produce great dreams and manifest the purpose of God. It carries great power. <laughs>